Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruvena Maha Shri Chaitanya Manobi Stam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swampadantikam Pande Ham Shikuro Shi Utapa de Kamalam Shikarun Vaishnavam Scha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Dragonatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sarvadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakam Vitam Scha Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinabandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kantan Radha Kantan most today. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvishesa Sunyavari Pastyatya Devi Satarine Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Iti Namine Shri Varsha Banabi Devi Daite Kripabdaya Krishna Sambandha Vigyana Daine Prabhavai Namaha Madhur Ojwala Prema Dhyā Shri Rupa Nuga Bhakti Dhā Shri Gauda Karuna Shakti Vigrahaya Namostate Namaste Gauravani Shri Murtaye Dinatarine Shri Rupa Nuga Virudapa Siddhanta Dvanta Harine Namo Gauda Kishoraya Saksad Vairagya Murtaye Vipalamba Asambo De Padambu Jayate Namaha Namo Bhakti Vinodaya Sachidananda Namine Golda Shakti Sarupaya Rupanduga Varayate Golda Vibhava Bhumestvam Nir Jisesa Sajanatriya Vaishnava Sarvabhoma Sri Jagannathaya Te Namaha Vanchakalpa Tarubhischa Kripa Sindhu Vyevacha Patitanam Pavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namaho 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 Panchatattva Makam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Swarupakam Bhakta Avatara Bhakta Kyam Namami Bhakta Shaktikam Namo Mahavadanaya Krishna Prema Padayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namani Gaura Triste Namaha Namo Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Let's see Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagat Pate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Dayatam Suratam Pangor Mamabanda Matir Gati Matsarvasya Padambojo Radhamadana Mohano Divya Rinda Kalpa Druma Trimada Sri Ratnagara Singhasana Sto Sri Si Radha Srila Govinda Devo Pristali Bi Sevyamana Smarami Sri Srimad Rasa Rasarambi, Vamsivata Tatastitaha, Karsan Venu, Gunar Gopir, Gopinatha, Te Namaha. Tapta Kanshina Gaudangi, Radhe, Vrindavane Swari, Vrishabhanu, Suti Devi, Pranamami, Hari Priye. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm. So there was a request to uh, speak about um, Lord Chaitanya's Leela. And so we'll spend some time speaking about Lord Chaitanya's pastime. So I was thinking I'll speak a little bit about his pastime when he was in Jagannath Puri with uh, one of his more intimate associates, and that is, 
uh, Jagarananda Pandit. Now, Jagarananda Pandit is an incarnation or a reappearance of the very dear devotee queen of Dwarka known as Satyabhama. Now, Satyabhama is also an expansion of Srimati Radharani as she appears in Dwarkadam. So when Radharani, feeling separation from Krishna, could no longer stand the separation, her and all of her girlfriends, 16,108 gopis, entered into the Jamuna River and apparently lost their life. Of course, these are eternal associates of the Lord. So this was a Leela, a disappearance from Vrindavan, and they reappeared again to be with Krishna in the form of the queens in Dwarka. So the queens are an expansions of the gopis, actually. Of course, the mood is different. One is Parakya Ras, and the other one is Swakya Ras. We understand that Parakya Bhav <clears throat> is the more deeper and more intimate and more exciting relationship between Krishna and his eternal parts and parcels, the gopis of Vrindavan. So that same uh, Radharani appeared in Dwarka as Satyabhama, and she uh, was the daughter of one king named King Satya, and uh, she was Satyabhama. Uh, it's actually Satyajit, I think it is named. Satyajit's daughter was Satyabhama, yeah. And that's a wonderful pastime in the 10th canto of how Krishna married Satyabhama and the all the intrigue that happened around that. Now that same Satyabhama reappears in Chaitanya Leela as Jagannath Pandit. Now Jagannath Pandit, he has this mood of Madhurya Ras with Lord Chaitanya. Now, Lord Chaitanya, now he is avatar -y, so he's a manifestation of Krishna in the fullest form of himself, but he's in the role of his own devotee. Yeah. He appears as his own devotee, and therefore, in his intimacy with his devotee, he doesn't act out the different leelas with his different parts and parcels. In other words, some he has friendship with, some he has um, parental affection with, such as Pundarik Vidyanidhi. Pundarik Vidyanidhi, he used to call him father. With his friends, in some of his friends, such as, uh, uh, what was it, Misringa Brahmachari, I believe, or no, they were, cowherd boys. Mm -hmm. So some of the cowherd boys appeared again in Krishna Leela and Gaur Leela to associate with the Lord. And they also performed some pastimes in that way. But you don't hear much because of the particular Leela of the Madhurya Ras that Lord Chaitanya had with his intimate associates. Well, one of the moods of that Madhurya Ras was very much exhibited in the life of uh, Jagannanda Pandit. Now, Jagannanda Pandit wanted to always give Lord Chaitanya nice gifts. So one time he had traveled to Jagannath Puri and returned with this very costly, fragrant um, sandalwood. Uh, oil, which he had gotten from Pori special, and he wanted to gift it to Lord Chaitanya. And so and, uh, he didn't approach Lord Chaitanya directly because it was very difficult. In fact, and mostly impossible to approach Lord Chaitanya directly. So everyone approached through Sarup Damodar Goswami, which was his personal servant and secretary, mostly his secretary. He had personal servants also. And Sarup Damodar would, you know, 
screened the person who wanted to see him to see if he was worthy to go see Lord Chaitanya, or if in the case of gifts, they would give the gift to Sri Dhammadar Goswami, and he would graciously give it to Lord Chaitanya. So Jagadananda Pandit approached Sri Dhammadar Goswami and said, I have this beautiful, very fragrant oil that I uh, got from Jagannath's temple. And I says, this is for Lord Chaitanya. So Surabhadamadar Swami took it, Goswami, he took it, and he brought it to Lord Chaitanya. Now, Lord Chaitanya was in the role of a sannyasi. He had taken the sannyas order of life from Keshava Bharti, and he very strictly followed the rules and regulations of the sannyas ashram. And in that relationship, he was very strict. And when this Sarup Damodar approached him and said, here is this very nice gift from uh, Jagadananda Pandit, some beautiful, most fragrant oil, sandalwood from Lord Jagannath's personal stock. Well, Lord Chaitanya, of course, he's non different than Jagannath, but playing the role of his devotee and in the ashram of a sannyas, he could understand that this oil was very, very fragrant, and it was. And he said, If I walk down the street with this oil, people will say, What kind of sannyasi is this? He's advertising himself by putting on this very, very fragrant oil. So I cannot accept it. So you tell Jagannath Pandit that he should take it back to Puri and give it to the pundits there and have it massaged on the body of Lord Jagannath. So um, Sudhamadar Goswami took the oil. And then after some time, he met with Jagannanda Pandit, and he said, the Lord feels that this would be more useful on the body of Lord Jagannath, so he is giving it to you, so please return it to Jagannath and have his servants massage his body with the soil. And so Jagannanda Pandit, he was very fiery by nature, he had a very fiery nature, Sachibama had that fiery nature also. You can see in the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya how she would always uh, sometimes get very angry at Krishna. <laughs> and Krishna likes that, you know. So that keeps the relationship, you know, exciting. <laughs> and uh, so in his mudas of Satyabhama, he took the oil and smashed it on a rock and all the oil went all over the ground. And then he got very angry, turned, walked back into his place, locked the door. So Damodar wanted to report what had happened. Lord Chaitanya was interested. Oh, he became very unhappy that you did not accept the oil. And now he has locked himself in his room and he is not coming out. And so for at least three days, he didn't come out and he was fasting. He was also fasting. So Lord Chaitanya was a little worried that he was fasting and he hadn't eaten for three days. So he wanted to do something. So personally, in a very <laughs> careful way, he approached the, uh, uh, cottage where uh, Jagadananda Pandit was staying and he had been fasting, he had locked the door. So the Lord knocked on the door and said, Juggy, it's me, I've come. I'm hungry, I want you to cook for me. <laughs> so when Jagadananda Pandit heard that the Lord wanted him to cook, he, in a very sober way, 
and not expressing any emotions. He opened the door and let the Lord in and had the Lord sit down. And then he went into the kitchen to cook. But he was still angry. <laughs> and so Lord Shaitanya is there waiting and Jagadananda Pandit is cooking away. Now, the reason why the Lord did this will be revealed in this particular pastime a little bit later. But while he was cooking, he was cooking, he was cooking. And finally, he cooked this uh, quite substantial size offering. And he offered it to Lord Chaitanya. And Lord Chaitanya very meekly, not wanting to uh, agitate Jagadananda Pandit any further, sat down and began offering, the but eating the prasadam. And then he said, at one point while he was eating, he turned to Jagannanda Pandit. Actually, Jagannanda Pandit, when you are when you are angry, you cook very nicely. <laughs> so the owner, the Lord, could understand that although he was cooking nicely, he could taste the mood of anger in the food. And this is very important to understand that those who cook prasadam for either for anyone. You should always be in the proper consciousness because eating and cooking have to be done in the proper consciousness. In other words, for those who cook, that's why in our temples, we are very strict in making sure people are up to the standard in order to perform that service of cooking for the Lordship, their Lordships. Same with the Pujaris. So their consciousness has to be Krishna conscious. They can't be in a, in a bad mood or thinking about you know, their own personal life or their own personal problems. In other words, they should be in the mood of preparing the food with the, with the idea of this will be offered to the Lord. I want to make it as nice as possible for the Lord's pleasure. These are some of the ways. And so, this is uh, very uh, foundational in our service to the Lord in doing Pujari work. Sometimes people, they want second initiation uh, because they've been around for a little while and they think, well, I should get second initiation. But one should be developed in consciousness to accept these types of services in the right mood. Because if they are not, one can also fall down from their service if they are not cut, properly executing their service in the right mood. <clears throat> so therefore, we're a little strict in giving second initiation to devotees. They have to come up to that standard. Developing the qualities of Brahminical culture, Brahminical activity. So Lord Chaitanya, said, Jagadananda, when you are angry, you cook very nicely. So the reason why, and we, we, want, we mentioned that, that the, well, the way the Lord did this is that he left some remnants. And this was the whole idea. So he could have Jagadananda Panda break his fast by accepting the Lord's remnants. <clears throat> so he had finished a portion of what was offered to him. And he said, Jagadananda, I am going to take rest now. So please um, take prashad. And uh, Jagadananda was pleased that the Lord had accepted his offering. And the Lord went to rest. And Jagadananda broke his fast by eating the Lord's remnants. And the Lord figured out the way to get Jagadananda Pandit to eat. He knew he couldn't do it any other way. So the Lord cares about his devotees very much. Uh, sometime later, Jagadananda Pandit again, he had this uh, desire to give nice gifts to Lord Chaitanya. <laughs> so he, uh, he uh, got this very nice bed. And it was very, it wasn't big, but it was very comfortable, small, suitable for Lord Chaitanya. And he gave it to 
Sukhdamadar Goswami. He said, I have this very nice bed for Lord Chaitanya. You know, he is, uh, he, I know he's performing much austerity and that makes it difficult on his body. So here's a nice bed for him. And so Jagadananda Pandit was very enthusiastic to give this bed. So Sarup Damodar could understand, uh-oh, looks like another situation. But he took the bed and he brought it to Lord Chaitanya. And then he said, he stood there holding the bed and Lord Chaitanya looked at him and said, you have something to say? And he didn't say anything. Then the Lord could understand, oh, here is another gift from Jagadananda Pandit. Now he wants me to enjoy material pleasures. Hmm. Hmm. But then Lord Chaitanya was thinking, if I don't accept his bed, he might just get angry again and start fasting again, <laughs> which would probably happen. And so the Lord took the bed and he took it apart. And he took out all of the soft part and he left just a little straw mat that was left from the ingredients of the bed. And he said to uh, Subdamadar, you tell Jagannanda Pandit, thank you very much for his gift. Lord, I have accepted his gift. And the Lord just took a small portion of that bed and made it a little, made it a little mat so he could lay down on. Lord Chaitanya was very strict as a sannyasi. Uh, <clears throat> and this is important for those in the renounced order of life. Of course, um, we try to follow that as best we can. When we go to people's houses or to stay there, they give us some big, soft, gigantic beds <laughs> to lay on. And I'm thinking, what is this? <laughs> I remember I was with one very senior devotee one time and some lady, she bought him this bed and she gave it to him as a gift and I was there. And he looked at it and he said, if I sleep on that, then I will forget about the actual goal of life. <laughs> so to sometimes we accept material comforts and in order to facilitate service, but generally for the renounced order of life, and that goes for brahmacharis also, um, one should be very austere in accepting things for one's personal uh, comforts, such as food and nice beds like that. Of course, sometimes we accept these things as, in order to please the people who give it, but for us, we understand that we are simply happy with the basic, simple things that come by way of uh, Krishna's arrangement. <clears throat> so that's a nice little nice pastime of how the Lord dealt so carefully and so lovingly uh, with his uh, devotee who only wanted to give him material pleasure, but at the same time, the Lord understood this was uh, not part of his ashram, and so he avoided it very carefully. That's a nice pastime. And there's a, there's a few other pastimes with Jagannanda Pandit also, where um, when Sanatana Goswami and Jagannanda Pandit was there, Sanatana Goswami was thinking I should, um, I should go to Vrindavan or should I stay here in, in Jagannath Puri? There had been a little interchange with, Lord, interchange with Lord Chaitanya and he was deciding whether he should go. So uh, Jagannath Pandit advised Sanatan Goswami, I think yes, you you should you should uh, go to Vrindavan. And uh, later on, when Lord Chaitanya saw uh, Sanatan Goswami later, he asked him, "How how have you decided to come to Vrindavan?" And he said, "Well, Jagannanda Pandit, 
he uh, he suggested that this would be pleasing to you. So I had took his advice. And Lord Chaitanya got quite angry. He said, who is this Jagannanda Pandit? He is advising you. He's just a mere boy. How can he advise you? And then he became quite upset. He didn't, uh, later on, he didn't say anything directly to Jagannanda Pandit. He just spoke to Sanatana Goswami, but Lord Chaitanya didn't like Jagannanda Pandit advising a senior person such as Sanatana Goswami. That's also part of the etiquette. Uh -huh. It says that juniors should not give advice or instructions to seniors. They can offer service in the form of advice if it's asked for. But otherwise, it's outside of the etiquette. <laughs> Sometimes we see someone is uh, a little bit senior to us and they're not acting properly. Or it pair appears that they're not acting properly. Or they're speaking something that is not correct. So for a junior devotee to correct that person would be a breach of etiquette. So there is a way that junior devotee can approach someone who is on the same level as that senior devotee and have him communicate, or at least suggest for him to communicate if he feels that he should to this other senior devotee. So yeah, I like that. So a lot of times, sometimes Prabhupada would ask advice from his disciples, but if the sometimes the, the disciples would try to uh, uh, give instructions to Prabhupada, Prabhupada knew it wasn't right, right, but he tolerated it and somehow or other indicated that this is not your position. <laughs> so, and we saw we see the example here of how Lord Chaitanya was quite upset at Jagannanda Panda for advising Sanatan Goswami. Okay, these are some pastimes of Jagannanda Pandit. He's written a beautiful uh, prema, uh, a book called Prema Vilas, which is very deep in the mellow <laughs> of loving devotional service to, to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to actually Lord Sri Krishna and Vrindavan Dham. Uh, it's a real, very beautiful book called Prema Vilas. There are two different versions of Prema Vilas one written by one person called Nityananda, and that is more or less a series of pastimes with Janava Devi and after the, after the departure of Lord Chaitanya. Birbhadra Goswami, Janava Devi, Naratam Das Thakur, Srinivas Acharya, um, Shamananda Pandit, a lot of the pastimes are there in Prema Vilas by Nityananda, but there's another Prema Vilas written by uh, Jagadananda Pandit, so that is complete, different, that's more into the mellows, the deep mellows of bhakti, especially the, the Madhurya Ras. Okay, so these are some pastimes from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita on the interaction between Lord Chaitanya and his very intimate associate, uh, Follower Jagannanda Pandit. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much, Maharaj, for explaining these past times of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Jagannanda Pandit. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Do I get another cookie? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Maharaj, anytime. <laughs> okay. I have to say those cookies were really the best. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. I'm happy to hear that. Okay. I request devotees if there are any questions, comments, realizations, please go ahead.
the answer to to Anasuya's question, just check with check with Jai Radhe or Radha Bhakti, either one. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Namrata. Hare Krishna. Uh, yes, all, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Maharaj. Um, so uh, today, Maharaj, I'm asking a question which was asked by my son to me. Uh, he wanted to clarify something. I didn't have a systematic answer for what he questioned. That is why I'm uh, I'm questioning you. So he asked that uh, uh, in Hare Krishna mantra, why uh, Ram uh, Hare Krishna Hare Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare is not first, and why Krishna is uh, uh, on the first part, whereas when uh, Rama was born first and Krishna was uh, born later. So he was asking me that. Mm. Well, his logic, the question is an interesting question because it's a good question, but the logic that he uses is a little bit off. And that is the appearance of Ram before Krishna, because in the Shastras, it mentions the Hare Krishna mantra and it mentions Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. There are some Shastras. Um, you can find it. You have to do a little research. And this, prob this question came up to Srila Prabhupada. And it also came up to me in the form of an article that I responded to. This was back in 1970. No, 1991, I responded to an article that was declaring that the Ram, the Ram part should be chanted first based on particular Shastra. But you find in other Shastras, you'll see that Krishna is first. Now, Prabhupada answered it. It says that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is our worshipable deity. We worship Mahaprabhu as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And we also worship him as the person who has set the standard for the practice of Krishna consciousness in this age. All of the works of the Goswamis are the foundations by which we follow Shastra. And all those, all those works of the Goswamis are written from the instructions given to them by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, particularly Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami. So because Lord Chaitanya is as our istadev, he is our worshipable deity, and he has set the principles how to execute Krishna consciousness in this age, he has demonstrated and also taught Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Now, if you go to the Kali, Kali Santara Upanishads, you'll find that that mantra is written in that way. So it, the Hare Krishna is first. Now, Prabhupada also says it doesn't matter. And what does he mean by it doesn't matter when you're chanting what's first and what's second? You just go, you just keep chanting. So it just, the, mind, the names just follow each other in sequence. This is Prabhupada's answer. And you think about it, it's, you know. So if someone wants to chant Hare, Hare Ram first, we don't have any uh, argument with that. All right, you want to chant Hare Ram first or then Hare Krishna. But you should know when you keep chanting, you lose the, you lose the pace of which one is first and which one is second anyway. So, um, yeah, 
So, but the answer for us is we follow Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who has given us the mantra in that sequence. Okay, Maharaj. I think uh, I can refer him to uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He knows some stories. Well, he's just 6.5 years old. So I have to tell him in that way. Uh, but I can refer him to uh, Jaitanya Mahaprabhu as he said something like that. And he has been uh, giving this uh, Hare Krishna moment and Sankirtan moment. So, yeah, I can tell him in his reference. But he told me that, he told me that because uh, when I told him the stories of Rama and he was quite fascinated by that. And uh, he knows that he knows Rama as you know very good and uh, uh, obedient kind of uh, avatar and a person, and uh, and Krishna is very naughty person. Uh, so he... <laughs> that's that's true. He is very naughty. <laughs> so uh, I then I said, okay, I I. Prefer to take uh, Krishna's name first. If you want to take Rama's name first, he was a very nice and decent child. So you can take that also. And then he's like, no, mama, I like the naughtier uh, Krishna very much. So I'll also take uh, Krishna's name first. <laughs> so that's is how we agree. Yeah, well, is he a naughty boy? If he is, then he might like Krishna better. <laughs> Uh, he's not that naughty, but yes, he's very much fascinated by Krishna's stories, of course. He liked what uh, Krishna's, he liked the naughty pastimes of Krishna, of course. Yeah, Krishna's God, he can do anything he wants, and it's wonderful. <laughs> if yeah. we are naughty, if we are naughty, we just cause disturbances, that's all. <laughs> yes. When Krishna's naughty, it's, it becomes a... Uh, an opportunity to enjoy Krishna's pastimes and to glorify the Lord. Yes, Maharaj. But I'm glad he's taking interest in all these stories also. So it gives me chance to tell him more about that when he asks such questions. Yeah. Good, good, Thank good. You. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Yeah, nice question. Now that's an that's a question I haven't received in in a long time. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Your your son is very intelligent. <laughs> oh, thank you, Maharaj. Okay, Hare. thank you. Hare Krishna. Oh, now Nat Prabhuji, please go ahead. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Vaal, Hare Vaal, Guru Maharaj, I have two questions. One question is leading to, uh, related to the previous, uh, what Namrata Mataji mentioned. I like I thought like for devotee, when we are talking, chanting even Ram in Mahamantra, that also refers to Krishna, because that's the mood, like Hare and Ram, everything. Hare is the Radharani name and Ram is also like the uh, powerful Radhi, potence. It's Radhika Raman. Yeah, Radhika Raman. Yeah, that's what yeah, I thought so. So is that the correct understanding, Guru Maharaj, that we should like chant, like normally I chant, I chant in that same mood that it's all like Krishna energy and Krishna. Yeah, that's the, that's the Brijabhasis. They chant in that mood. That the whole mantra is but then again, we have, there are Ram Bhaktas who can focus on the second part of the mantra as Ram Chandra. And Prabhupada also said there's others who are inclined to Krishna Balaram. And so they can, uh, they can uh, see that mantra as Krishna Balaram, the second part. Rama referring to, you know, Rama referring to uh, Balaram. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. But then it's not, I'm, I'm sorry, it's not Krishna Balaram because 
It's actually Revati Raman. But that's an individual preference. Whatever your mood is, you can chant. And the thing is, any of the three names, uh, Ram Chandra, Lord Balaram, Raman, they're all, this, the, all the one supreme personality of Godhead. They're not incarnations. They are just different forms of the same person. If it's an incarnation, it's a different thing, but it's not. It's, they're all the one. They're all the same Lord. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, may I ask Guru Maharaj another question? Or... Yes, please. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Guru Maharaj, related to this Jagadananda Pandit uh, pastimes, uh, I just like feel like uh, Jagadananda Pandit, like when he was already uh, Satyavama in the previous and then Radharani. So he knew all the uh, like likes and dislikes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu very well uh, compared to many other associates. So when we see these all loving exchanges and uh, the chastisement and other pastimes, should we take this as a Leela? Like this is all what Prabhu, Mahaprabhu wanted? It's the Leela of love. Out of love, he wanted to give the Lord some some personal comfort. That's all. That happens too. <clears throat> Not considering the situation, but just acting out of love. Sometimes love breaches the etiquette or breaches the actual, yeah, behavior. But the Lord wanted to make sure that that didn't happen. So he acted out of love, that's all. It was, it was emotion. It was devotion. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Are you all right with that one? Are you sure? Yes, yes, Guru Maharaj. Yes. I was thinking like he's so close, associate, like knew everything and these all pastimes. And he got many loving chastisement <laughs> from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, even for getting that his sannyasi danda broken by Nityananda Prabhu and all. So, <laughs> but I think this is all his loving pastimes. Yeah, that's what Nityananda did. He broke the danda <laughs> and threw it in the, the river. Lord Chaitanya wasn't so pleased. <laughs> Lord Nityananda didn't want to see his worshipable Lord, Sri Krishna, in the mood of a renunciate. <laughs> God doesn't have to renounce anything, but that was his particular pastimes. He was, he took the sannyas order in order to preach to those in that same ashram. And he converted 60,000 followers of Prakasananda Saraswati in Benares. And he couldn't do it from any other position. So that was one of the reasons why he took sannyas. There's an internal mood also. And that mm, that's very deep. And that goes back to Krishna Leela. And uh, I won't venture into that pastime for two reasons. One, it's quite intimate. And two, the second one part is that I don't know the whole pastime. So, but it has something to do with Radharani and Krishna's relationship when Krishna and Radha were in Vrindavan.
That you can do a little research, find out the internal mood, reason why Lord Chaitanya took sannyas. External was for preaching. Sure, Guru Maharaj. That's a good topic to research. That's a nice, it's a nice research. Yes. <laughs> and if you find it, send it to me. <laughs> sure, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. My best wishes and I pray your health is good. Yes, Guru Maharaj. All good. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, there is a question in chat by Mohana Sini Radha Mataji. She is asking... Uh, Okay. My non my non devotee friend received Krishna Tulsi plant from someone else, and we just found out today that it is not regular basil but Tulsi plant. So how could I advise my friend to take care about? I guess that learning mantras would be too much for her. Beside that, her family is living vegan and they have Bhagavad Gita at home, but didn't read yet. I sent her some link how to take care about. So far, can I do something more? Yeah. Yeah. Teach her how to take care of Tulsi with proper watering, proper sunlight. That's all has to be done in the schedule. Tulsi should not be uh, moved around so much either. That that disturbs her. Her, and that causes shock. She's a very delicate plant and should not be moved around so often or even at all. Keep it in the sunlight in the morning up until about one o'clock the latest and then keep her out of the sunlight the rest of the time. A little bit of water in the morning, just enough to wet the soil so the sun can absorb that water and give nourishment to Tulsi. Like that. And you can also add nutrients to our, to the soil that they can get that information from some from these botanists who know all about plants offering. Sometimes we offer iron to her soil, pieces of iron, so that helps to give nutrition. So I think, you know, if they take care of her nice, they're serving a pure devotee, so that's nice. If they mistreat her or, or neglect her, then uh, it's not good for them. Then well, obviously not good for Tulsi either. Thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj, I have a follow up question with that. Uh, I was thinking how important it is to uh, teach the non-devotees about the mantra which we recite after we take out the leaves from Tulsi Maharani. Um, should we do that? Should we teach them? Because they just pluck them just like that? No, they, there's two options. You can, they can chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra or Tulasi Mitra Janmasmi Saratvam Nam Saratvam Nas that's the mantra. Tulsi Mitra Janmas Mitra Janmas Janam Tulsi Mitra Janmasi. Yeah, uh, it starts with Tosi Mitra. And uh, that mantra should be chanted while one is pu pulling the leaves off. But one has to learn how to pull the leaves off right where she doesn't get shocked and they just rip it off. Should hold the branch and very gently push down with your fingers the soft part of your fingers 
and take the leaves like that. You should not cut them. You should not um, <clears throat> use your nails to, to take them on them, nor should you pull them off. That should be very gentle. Now, what we advise for people who can't chant the matri, admit to Tulsi, Mitri, um, Tulsi Amrita Janmasmi Saratvam Kesava Priya, Kesavarta Chiatamitam Bharatam Bhava Sobhinaya. Thank you. That's the actual mantra for picking leaves. Now, what we say to people who don't know the mantra, or we say just chant Hare Krishna. Chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra while you're taking the leaves, that, that is acceptable. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Sri Devi Mataji, you have a question, please go ahead. Thank you, Vrinda. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for this very sweet past times of uh, Jagadananda Pandit and uh, Lord Krishna in the form of Lord Chaitanya. As you were uh, relating these past times, I could see the connection that Satya Bhama's fiery nature and her, her mood of uh, loving devotion to the Lord. Um, I got a little curious about Lord Nityananda, he, who is uh, Lord Balaram, but he's described in this avatar as Avadhut. Uh, he's unpredictable, he's uh, wayward, he's uh, sometimes chanting, sometimes dancing, sometimes jumping into the ocean, sometimes running here and there and so on. But Balaram doesn't have this mood. So uh, I'm just curious to know how Lord Nityananda has this mood. You don't think the Lord can adopt different moods? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, of course not. He can do anything he wants. <laughs> He, he adopts the mood which is suitable for the Leela. Mm. And his, this is his ecstasy in chanting when he, he, he exhibits all these things because he's in ecstasy chanting Hare Krishna. Mm. He's, he's always in ecstasy, constantly. Mm. Mm. Yes, Guru Maharaj, thank you. Thank you, that's helpful. Did you get to see the doctor yet? Yes, yes, I saw him in fact today morning, uh, but because it was a substitute appointment for Samya Dhatri, he has called me again tomorrow to complete the whole diet plan and explain everything what is to be done. Good, good. Give me the report once you uh, get everything together. Yes, Guru Maharaj, I will. Thank you so much. Yeah, he's good. If you follow him, you'll get results. Yes, Guru Maharaj, I will. Thank you. The devotees, are there any more questions, realizations or comments? Okay, Maharaj, I have one last question. Is that okay? Sure, just, yeah. So Maharaj, uh, the, in Chaitanya Charitamrita, in the Leelas, we have Jagana, Jagadananda Pandit, who is in the mood of Radharani. Then we also have Gadadhar Pandit, who is also in the mood of Radharani. And we have Chaitanya Mahaprabhu he himself in the mood of Radharani. So we can say that there are three Radharanis with different, different moods. <laughs> <laughs> You can have 10. You can have 100. <laughs> yes. Rana Rani wants to expand herself. She can do it anywhere she wants. <laughs> In order to facilitate Krishna's pleasure, she does it. Spirit is not limited. Material is limited. <laughs> So I, while I was listening to this past time and I was thinking there is Radharani and Gadadhar Pandit is also Radharani, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is also Radharani more. 
I was thinking Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, why he is the most merciful because he comes with three Radharani. So Radharani is very merciful. Maybe that's right. <laughs> Very nice. That's very nice. Thank you. Just a, just a small realization from your class, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Yeah, she wants to serve Krishna in so many different ways. But Lord Chaitanya, he adopted that mood. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Personally, I think there's another one. There's also Gadadhar Das, okay. who is also an associate of Lord Chaitanya. He also has an element of Radharani, also Gadadhar Das. Yeah, so wonderful to know, hear that Radharani is serving Krishna in so many different modes. Yeah, that's love. When love means just constantly thinking about the beloved mm -hmm. and how to make them satisfied, happy mm -hmm. in different ways. Love has many expre expe expressions of itself and these different expressions are different characteristics of that love which makes love not something simply emotional but very adventurous different ways to express love the different uh, arrangements by which love can be expressed that's why in the spiritual world there is unlimited variety all centered around uh, pleasing krishna Hey, there's an old statement. It's a kind of a common statement. It says, Variety is the spice of life. Or the variety gives spice to life. In other words, it gives flavor, it gives a gives uh, it gives attraction to life. Imagine if there was just one color and there was only only one color, there was only one kind of uh, car, there was on um, everybody looked the same. <laughs> uh, in other words, if there wasn't variety is the foundation of happiness. And the mood of service takes that variety and and then gives it uh, gives it excitement. Mm -hmm. Now that's our philosophy that there is unity in variety. This is where the materialists get stuck. They can't amalgamate variety in a united way. So in order to somehow deal with this apparent problem or quandary, you might say, they <laughs> create more and more diversity. We call it unity and diversity. So diversity is unlimited in this world, but who's united with anybody? <laughs> Nobody goes to everybody. And if people stay united for a little while, then they break up because of diversity. But Krishna consciousness is learning how to amalgamate these two principles into one. How to keep the diversity. In other words, how each and every individual is an individual and may want to express their loving relationship with Krishna in so many different ways. And that is all acceptable. And not only acceptable, it's encouraged to keep your individuality and express that individuality through loving service to Krishna. And the unifying fact is devotional service or Krishna. So that's why Krishna consciousness is so wonderful. It can take the diversity 
and connected with the unity, which is devotional service. Very beautiful, Maharaj. Thank you so much. That was yeah. Good. yeah. Oh, the materialists, they get stuck. They can't do that. Mm -hmm. All they keep doing is making more and more diversity. That's all they do. Mm -hmm. You'll find that, you know, more programs, more divisions, more plans. And they all think that somehow by creating something new, they're going to have, they're going to improve the situation in life, but there's no unity. Prabhupada would speak about the United Nations. They're supposed to be united. That's what it's called. <laughs> but, but all each, each nation flies its own flag and they all have their own agenda according to their nation, national interests. <laughs> and therefore, they call themselves United Nation, but it's not. They're not united because they don't have any center. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So devotees become united with each other because they cooperate with each other to inspire each other in service to Krishna. Mm -hmm. We encourage variety. Now you look at a garden, you see a garden. So you just imagine if you just had one kind of plant in the garden. Nobody would be interested in that garden. But you see there are different types of plants, different shapes, different colors, different fragrances. They're all somehow put together and it makes a very beautiful garden. Mm -hmm. You see how people who are expert at gardening, they, they, they want to you know, create the garden in such a way that the, the different varieties kind of complement each other in the entire sequence or the entire pattern of how the, the uh, garden should look. And same as painting a picture, using different colors to complement each other in order to create a picture. So yeah, variety is, or diversity is the thing that gives excitement to life. But sometimes, even in devotional service, people think you have to do everything like I do it. <laughs> we get into what we say, a type of uh, ritualistic rules and regulations program and don't understand the meaning of the rules and regulations Rather, just apply the rules or regulations without understanding the purpose of the rules and regulations. That is called Niyamagraha. And when you, and if that doesn't work, then you throw out the rules and regulations and you just do whatever you want. And that's also called Niyamagraha. Both are one of the six characteristics that causes one to fall down in devotional service. It's against the whole principle of bhakti. Mm -hmm. So to be able to have variety, but unity at the same time, unity and variety. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. That was a wonderful explanation. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's there's a nice verse in the Bhagavatam. Again, it's um, fourth canto, chapter thirty, uh, verse number eight. In the purport, Prabhupada talks about this in in detail. <laughs>
Yeah, you want to read it? You can read it. I thought you wanted me to share it on screen. You can read it. Since the sons of King Prachini Barhishad were all united in Krishna consciousness, the Lord was very pleased with them. Each and every one of the sons of King Prachini Barhishad was an individual soul, but they were united in offering transcendental service to the Lord. The unity of the individual souls attempting to satisfy the Supreme Lord or rendering service to the Lord is real unity. In the material world, such unity is not possible. Even though people may officially unite, they all have different interests. In the United Nations, for instance, all the nations have their particular national ambitions and consequently they cannot be united. This unity between individual souls is so strong within this material world that even in a society of Krishna consciousness, members sometimes appear disunited due to their having different opinions and leaning toward material things. Actually, in Krishna consciousness, there cannot be two opinions. There is only one goal, to serve Krishna to one's best ability. If there is some disagreement over service, such disagreement is to be taken as spiritual. Those who are actually engaged in the service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead cannot be disunited in any circumstance. This makes the Supreme Personality of Godhead very happy and willing to <clears throat> award all kinds of benediction to his devotees as indicated in this verse. We can see that the Lord is immediately prepared to award all benedictions to the sons of King Prachini Barisha. Hmm. Mm -hmm. That's quite clear. Yes. Individually, but united mm -hmm. around Krishna and devotional service. Yes. Yes. As Prabhupada, even as Prabhupada said, even if there's some disagreement over service, mm -hmm. such disagreement is taken to be a spiritual because it's all about serving Krishna. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you mentioned, Maharaj, cooperation is very important, but that is what is lacking in material world. <laughs> yeah, they can't they can't cooperate with each other because they all have different interests. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. It was very beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, it's yeah. More than one hour, Maharaj. So, uh, do you want to get any more questions, or we can end here, Maharaj, with your permission? Uh, okay, we can stop here. Okay. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for your time and association today. Very, very grateful to you. Yeah. Can I make a mm, Mm, can I make a uh, request to the Assembly of Devotees? Yes. Um, can someone send me the link on how I think uh, I think the link is connected with the Indian Embassy? I need to find the link that gives me the connection where I can apply online for a visa. In other words, there is a link that brings up a visa form that I can fill out, but I have no idea what the link is and other people don't seem to know it either. So if there's anyone out there, maybe Vrindavan Nath or maybe Diptesh, someone can so, or anyone, if you have that link where I can find a visa form online, please send it to me. Yeah. You can send it to me in my email. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Diptesh. No. Obeisances. I will look out for that visa for Maharaj. Um, I will. Okay, good. Thank you, Diptesh. Okay.
Thank you, Maharaj, once again. Thank you so much. Thank you, dear devotees, for joining. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Very nice class. Thank you for choosing the topic. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Maharaj, please give classes on Chaitanya Charitamrita whenever. Every day? No, whenever, whenever you want to. No, not yet. Oh, yeah. If you, every day would be nice. Thank you, Maharaj. Krishna. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Aribo Silkaupad Ki Jari. Thank you.